is Late Edition News at 10 with Ann Gownley. Sports with Eric DeBerardinas. And meteorologist Joe Garbache. Will an impeachment resolution be passed by the state government committee in response to a grand jury's decision on Pennsylvania Attorney General Kathleen Kane? Good evening. This is WYLN's Late Edition, Greater Hazleton's only local news broadcast for Friday, January 30th, 2015. I'm Ann Gownley. Before we get to today's top story, breaking news from the city of Wilkesbury. Police in Wilkesbury are investigating a suspicious death of a male at the Interfaith Heights apartment. Police arrived on scene just after 12 p.m. today and found the male unresponsive. EMS were called to the scene and determined that he was dead. The Luzerne County Coroner's Office and the Wilkesbury Police Detective Division were also notified. The cause of death is still unknown at this time and has only been ruled suspicious pending an autopsy report. The name of the male is being held until the family is notified. Anyone with information related to this investigation is asked to call the Wilkesbury Police Detectives Division at 570 4201. Now on to today's other top story. Two local lawmakers could be at the front line when it comes to impeaching State Attorney General Kathleen Kane. State Representative Jerry Knowles, a Republican from Tamaqua, and Eddie Day Pershinsky, a Democrat from Wilkesbury, both sit on the House State Government Committee. The committee's chairman, Representative Daryl Metcalf from Cranberry Township plans to introduce an impeachment resolution in this new session that considers the current legal procedures involving Kane. Knowles will co-sponsor the resolution. Pashinsky opposes impeachment of Kane at this time. Lawmakers have the power to impeach under the state constitution. The talk of impeaching Kane comes after a grand jury in Montgomery County recommended that Kane be charged with perjury, false swearing, and obstruction. Pashinsky said he is not interested in law Lawmakers showboating over impeachment. Noel said he co-sponsored the impeachment resolution because of Kane's decision not to defend state laws regarding marriage and access to guns. Butler Township Police arrested four people after a fight in a Wendy's parking lot last Saturday morning. Police were dispatched around 3.45 a.m. to the restaurant on North Hunter Highway. A witness told police that the individuals involved in the altercation were trying to shove a person into the trunk of a vehicle. 39-year-old Adrian Schaefer of Alter Street had to be tasered. After resisting arrest, he faces charges of persistent disorderly conduct and public drunkenness. 36-year-old Dennis Hall, 23-year-old Joel Ramos and 30-year-old George Jennings were all charged with public drunkenness and disorderly conduct. For seven years, the Radio Shack in hometown has been open in the Walmart complex, and now it has closed for good. When WYLN got a look inside this afternoon, the store was empty. Employees said they did not want to speak about the closing. The national chain is trying to close more than 1,000 of its stores because of diminishing profits. Radio Shack has approximately 5,000 stores nationwide. A Plymouth man was arrested in the shooting death of his sister earlier this month. 44-year-old Nicholas Glecko allegedly shot 57-year-old Rachel Ann Dukas and his family home in, on January 3rd. According to the affidavit, Glecko pointed a 22 caliber handgun at her. She told him not to point the gun, and when she went to grab the firearm, it went off. Luzerne County forensic pathologist determined the cause of death to be homicide by gunshot wound to the head. Glecko was charged with involuntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, and reckless endangerment. He was arraigned by Magisterial District Judge Donald Whitaker and taken to the Luzerne County Prison for lack of $25,000 straight cash bail. His preliminary hearing is scheduled for February 4th. A Wilkesbury man has been charged with attempting to run down officers during a drug sting operation in November. 30-year-old Bong Bob Kim attempted to escape from police at the Cary Avenue Plaza in Hanover Township after selling crack cocaine. He almost ran over Wilkesbury police officers Joseph Simcavage and Shane Yeldland. Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavantis cleared Officer Sinavage in December of any wrongdoing for firing his weapon during the incident. Kim received a gunshot wound to his back and was taken to Geisinger, Wyoming Valley Medical Center in Plains Township for treatment. A 
preliminary hearing it was held before magisterial district judge joseph halesi yesterday morning the judge determined that there is enough evidence for kim to stand trial he is locked up at the luzerne county prison for lack of two hundred thousand dollars bail Police in Wilkes-Barre say the woman who was reported missing has been found and is safe. 46-year-old Bernice Wendy Seaman was reported missing on Monday morning. According to police department, according to the Wilkes-Barre Police Department's Facebook page, Seaman was located around 10.30 p.m. on Thursday. One area basketball team on the court is not just to shoot hoops, but also to raise money and awareness for cancer. WYLN's Julie Stefanovich has more on this story. Crestwood Lady Comets basketball team hosted a pink out last night at their game versus the Hazleton Lady Cougars, which is seen right here on WYLN. A special procession was held between the JV and varsity games honoring cancer survivors, caregivers, in memory of, and people who are currently receiving treatment. A short bio was given on each person depicting their stories and struggles and the fighting spirit that got them through their trials and tribulations. Just trying to come up with an idea of how the girls can get back to the community and we wanted to do a pink, we thought of a pink out instead of the usual white out, and then we just came up with the name Comics Earth Hero because it was catchy horror. The idea came about during a booster club meeting. The teams decided that they wanted to give back to their community, so they reached out to the Mountaintop Relay for Life. Proceeds, we will sell t-shirts. Two dollars from every shirt that was sold will be donated to the Relay for Life. Um, we're doing 50-50 raffles that will be donated to Relay. The proceeds will be donated to Relay for Life as well. And there are also some basket raffles inside. You can also find out more information on the Mountaintop Relay for Life by either visiting their Facebook page or checking out RelayForLife.org. In Mountaintop for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Love will be in the air in downtown Hazleton, so lovebirds, listen up. Couples who would like to tie the knot in the city of Hazleton on Friday, February 13th, can do so by heading downtown. Mayor Joe Yanuzzi will be performing wedding ceremonies as part of the event scheduled for Second Friday. Recently, we spoke with the executive director of the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress, Krista Schneider, about the nuptials taking place on Second Friday. We're doing a couple special uh, events or hosting a couple... All right, and of course, we will get to that story coming up in just a few. Well, the Super Bowl is quickly approaching, and many are planning parties. And if you're looking for some good food to have at the party, we know who you could call. The firefighters at the McAdoo Fire Company will have the food that you may be looking for. They are once again hosting a food sale during the big game on February 2nd from 12 noon until 4 p.m. The firefighters will be selling wings, stromboli, and pork barbecue. You can order the day of by calling the fire station at 570-929-2042. Wings you can order are hot, mild, barbecue, Cajun, or garlic, and butter and garlic, and they are $8 a dozen. Pork barbecue, which is $4.50 a pound, or stromboli regular for $13, or a steak stromboli for $16. Delivery is available for orders of $25 or more in the McAdoo area. It has been our pleasure at WYLN to bring you the area's best local news coverage, local sports, and in-depth weather reports. But there are some changes coming right around Valentine's Day to show you, our viewers, that we've taken your suggestions to heart. Stay tuned to WYLN in the coming weeks as we prepare to bring you more of what you've been asking for. And that is a look at tonight's top stories coming up. Tips on how to stay safe while driving during this winter season. But first, it's time for a quick look at our forecast. Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic is outside in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center with the latest. Joe, several area school districts closed after the snowstorm we received over the past few hours. But can we expect any more snow in our forecast? Well, we do have some more snow to talk about in our forecast. I'll be letting you know when that's going to occur. But here's a look at the radar and see some of those uh, bands of snow, some snow showers and some snow squalls occurring across our area. We had the storm uh, yesterday. It was a clipper system. But right now, this has not been a storm. Basically, it's just the snow showers and squalls from a front that's coming through, bringing in some colder air and really kicking up the winds. How cold is it going to be tonight and tomorrow? And when's the next chance of some snow? I'll let you know with the seven day forecast coming up next.
why should you choose Penn State Hazleton? We have new scholarship money. There's no application fee. When you visit campus. Opportunities to do research. Students are scoring internships all over the country. You can start here and finish here. Or at another Penn State campus. We have fun. We have the lion. Penn State is ranked number one by corporate recruiters. We have the largest alumni network in the world. It's your time. Penn State. Penn State lives here. Check us out at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Luncheonette, still making memories after all these years. This week on Women Today, it's the season six premiere. Maria Fendrick from Mother's Nature and Natural Markets can tell you how you can eat clean and healthy in 2015. We're going to taste a wonderful wine from Simply Homebrew. Kathy Kuchy's back in the kitchen. She's going to give you some great food pairings to go with that wine. Later on, we've got a fantastic giveaway, and we'll tell you who is our sensational senior of the week. That's all coming up. It's season six of Women Today. Join us. Welcome back. Well, we had the snow showers and snow squalls today. We had the wind kicking up. Now we also have the colder temperatures starting to move in across our region. Uh, we're going to look at some very cold wind chills as we head through uh, the overnight hours. We're looking at wind chills minus 10, minus 15, minus 20 degrees below zero. And tomorrow it's going to be another windy day across all of our area. Hey, we got those wind chill advisories in effect, even as we head through this evening and through tonight for some very cold temperatures in terms of what it's going to feel like when you walk outside. At the same time, we got winter storm watches posted. Those are posted as we go into Sunday and Sunday night and going into Monday. Still a couple of snow showers and flurries uh, from Tunkhannock, Wyoming County, points northward, but the rest of us just a few flakes here and there. That's about it. 17 degrees, our live Lehigh tire conditions outside our state in Hazleton, but it's feeling right now like it's about 7. Boy, I tell you what, these low temperatures in the 20s, that's going to feel pretty good compared to what we're going to see as we head into tomorrow morning. And we didn't warm up that much today. It was kind of brisk and chilly out there. 29 now in Berwick, 28 in Bloomsburg, 27 degrees in Danville. Satellites and radar, that thing's kind of quieting down across the northeast, but that's going to start to change as we head into our Sunday going into our Monday. Here comes the next storm system that's going to make its way toward the north and east. And there you can see the blue starting to overspread our area going into our Sunday evening, Sunday night, and Monday. A good chance at this point in time that there'll be an, an accumulating snow uh, at this point in time. We all know things change in the weather department. Later on this evening, some newer models will come out and will determine maybe, you know, uh, maybe we won't have to worry about that storm because it's been going back and forth. But right now, uh, the models are pretty much agreeing that we're going to see a snowstorm as we go into our Sunday, going into our Monday. And it's going to continue to be cold. Here's what it's going to be feeling like again through tonight, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20 below. Even tomorrow, with the winds, it's only going to be feeling like temperatures are only in the single digits. So tomorrow, the biting winds, brisk, cold, we can call it the calm before the next storm system because we're going to be looking at snow later on on Sunday. And again, we're not going to be feeling like it's out of the single digits tomorrow when you walk outside. And here comes the next storm system at this point in time, aimed in our direction. It's going to go a little toward the south, but still going to have enough punch, if you will, enough umph to give us at this point in time, it looks like we'll see an accumulating snow as we go into our 
Sunday into Monday. Now, I do have a little bit of a concern going into Sunday and Monday. I'm not going to overhype it because there's going to be some cold air just toward the north. And if that cold air continues to remain very dense and entrenched, what it can actually do is push some of that storm system further toward the south. And we may get by with seeing just a little or possibly nothing. But right now we keep that threat in the forecast Sunday going into Monday. Look at how it's going to continue to remain cold as we head into next week. And some of those overnight lows, one of the nights, we can be getting down to negative six. More coming at you. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local real estate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? Now Hazel Park Spring Water is proud to announce that they are the official water of the WYON Sports Crew and available for home delivery through JW Wargo Spring Water Delivery. Since 1915, the Chrysler family has been serving the area with quality meats. The tradition continues today with five generations at Hazel Park Quality Meats, 260 Washington Avenue, West Hazleton, and Reading Specialty Meats, located at 216 East 4th Street in Berwick. Athletes try talking themselves out of being hurt. I'm good, I'm good. Working past the pain because they want to keep on playing. Okay. I'm good. Coordinated Health understands. As the number one sports medicine team in the region, we get these champions back in the game with pro-level care. Yeah, I'm good. Because we make you better together. Get your green on and join us for the Wilkes-Barre St. Patrick's Day Parade, Sunday, March 15th. Parade coverage starts at 2 p.m. live on WYLN TV 35. Thousands of spectators, vintage vehicles, local talent, floats, marching bands, and more. The Wilkes-Barre St. Patrick's Day Parade, Sunday, March 15th. Parade coverage starts at 2 p.m. on WYLN TV 35. We're your local network. Love will be in the air in downtown Hazleton, so lovebirds, listen up. Couples who would like to tie the knot in the city of Hazleton on Friday, February 13th during Second Friday can do so by heading downtown Hazleton. Mayor Joe Yanuzzi will be performing wedding ceremonies as part of the event scheduled for Second Friday. We spoke with the Executive Director of the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress, Krista Schneider, about the nuptials. We're doing a couple special uh, events or hosting a, a couple special events downtown. The mayor is actually offering to uh, perform wedding ceremonies in the lobby of the uh, Marco building uh, in the evening uh, from 4 to 7. So anybody that not only wants to get married but maybe just wants to renew their vows yeah. is uh, welcome to do so. And they have to call City Hall, though, by February 9th to book the, book the time. Couples wanting to either marry for the first time or renew their vows will need to have their marriage licenses prior to the ceremony. There's also plenty of other events taking place on Friday, February 13th in the downtown. Friday, February 13th, there's uh, a couple art exhibits, one at the uh, Art League on landscape uh, paintings. There's also a photography exhibit at the Dragonfly all day. But the, uh, the special thing is between 4 and 6 p.m., there's a photographer who's doing a live photography shoot, Joseph Pecora. And the really cool thing is you get to write on your body a magic marker, it's all erasable, uh, but you get to, you know, give a message or, or send a, a positive message or, or somebody that you love um, for that Valentine's Day uh, theme. So that's uh, a special thing going on at the Dragonfly. And then there's also the Chamber is hosting a, uh, a live ice sculpture carving demonstration by Jack Bozar. And that's going to be down... Um, in between the shop two and Jimmy's on the sidewalk there on Broad Street. And uh, so that'll be a, a neat ice carving uh, demonstration. For more information on the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress and details of on the times and locations of all the events for Second Friday, you may log on to downtownhazleton.org. 
Well, state police want to make sure you get to your Super Bowl party safely this weekend. And of course, back home, WYLN's Gary Perna spoke with a local state trooper about driving safe and not driving under the influence. With the Super Bowl this weekend, thousands will be hitting area roadways to get somewhere to watch the game, whether it be at a friend's house, a family member's house, or at maybe a local bar. And state troopers in Hazleton want to make sure that you get to your destination safely. Anytime you have a major sporting event or a party going on, whether it's around the holidays or anything to celebrate, there always seems to you know be parties that go on, and uh, there has a tendency to be alcohol involved. So you know we encourage people to drink responsibly, to to think before they get behind a wheel of a car, uh, maybe make some you know different options if they are going to consume a large amounts of alcohol that they don't put themselves behind a wheel and not only danger themselves but danger the other drivers that are on the road just trying to come and uh, come and go uh, amongst our parties. Uh, when it comes to a designated driver the, the safest uh, alcohol consumption would be none. Um, that truly keeps you at the alert level that you would need to be um, to drive others home that have had too much to drink. I mean they have entrusted you to get them to and from they need, where they need to go so you know you should take your mark and, and not drink at all. Not only will the big game be going on this Sunday, but Old Man Winter is expected to dump more snow on our area Sunday night, which could make driving even difficult. Anytime you're going to have bad weather, I mean, people need to understand that the speed limits were designed for beautiful conditions, sunny, dry weather. So anytime you're going to add any kind of darkness, snow, sleet, anything like that, it's only going to complicate even a sober driver. So to drink large you know, consumptions of alcohol and then try to go out there and drive on icy roads, it's only going to make your track more difficult and add to the opportunity for you to crash and, and possibly hurt someone. Trooper Peter said if you come upon an accident, move over, give them some room, and listen to police if they're on scene. Driving, you come across anybody that's maybe involved in an accident or the changes uh, change so so rapidly, always slow your vehicle down to a speed that you can control it. Uh, try to stay even more alert than you already should be behind the wheel of a car for people that are stopped ahead of you or pulled off to the side um, or broken down in the median. They might have tried to walk themselves back to the interstate to try to get help, which makes them accessible to begin struck. So always be on alert when you're driving, whether you're sober uh, or the conditions change to, to uh, you know, proceed safely. At the State Police Barracks, for WILN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. Coming up next, Eric DiBaradinas is in with a look at how a Marion High School senior overcame adversary, uh, adversity on the basketball court. That and much more coming up right here on WYLN. All Care Home Care. The health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice. For your care, call us and we'll be there. At Cuck's Turkey Farm, we are family owned and operated for over 45 years and we consistently strive to produce premium poultry. We offer the finest all-natural country poultry, antibiotic free, all vegetarian fed with superior white meat yield and exceptional flavor. So we invite you to experience the unique natural taste of our poultry for your enjoyment and your health. Give us a call or stop in today. Sunday night on WYLN from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. for hard-hitting, high-flying, non-stop action as only Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling High Voltage can bring you. That's Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling every Sunday night on WYLN. I'll see you in the ring. This February. You asked for it. Now we're sharing the love. News, weather, sports, and more. WYLN News, giving you what you want when you want it. When asked 
Ashley Fanick tore her ACL for a second time in just Marion Catholic's fourth game. She assumed her season and career were over, but through a combination of gamesmanship and guts, Fanick played again, even if it was only just for one play. What appears to be a typical layup for Marion Catholic senior Ashley Fanick is anything but. Injury history. Well, I tore my ACL freshman year and I broke my nose, I think sophomore year, and then I sprained my ankle and I broke my elbow and I recently tore my other ACL. After suffering countless setbacks, Vanek was given the opportunity to score two final points on senior night. Oh, I've been practicing that layup for three or four days this past week, so... Even though she has been absent on the court, Panic remains an inspiration to the Phillies. She's an epitome of persistence, you know, and coming up against adversity and, and conquering it. And to keep coming back shows a lot of resiliency. A lot of people would at some point figure that's enough. I've had enough pain, enough surgery, enough heartache. And it's a tribute to her, her family, that she would fight through that and keep bouncing back. She's got a lot of drive and determination. Uh, somebody else would probably say I'm done and over with, and it's not been an easy road because there are times that she thinks, why did it have to happen to me? Well, why me is always the question that I ask myself and I ask anybody around me, but um, you just have to keep a positive mindset. That positive mindset set in just two or three days after her second ACL tear, which came in Marion Catholic's home opener. My role during games is to be that voice on the bench. Since I can't be that voice on the floor, I'm just that extra voice on the bench. You need to be a motivator for your team and not be down and not show them that you're hurting inside. So that was what kept me going. Even though she can't be on the court with us, she's still always supportive, yelling from the bench, and she's one of my best friends on and off the court. So she's been really supportive of everything. That support is a big reason why her teammates and coaches felt it so fitting to arrange for Fanick to have one more on-court moment. Abby Wilden approached Coach Paul Bruto about having Ashley score the first points on senior night, an idea that had already been set in motion and then agreed upon by Weatherly coach Kevin Kringy. I was, I was extremely shocked and the whole day I think Anybody who looked at me, I don't think I stopped smiling the whole day. On a night where Wilden tallied her 1,000th career point, Vanek's score accounted for just two of Marion's 61 total. But the bucket means more than just a number on the scoreboard. She's always worked hard and been a great teammate, and it's sad to see her not be able to play the whole season, but this is just like a really good way for her to go out. The first points of the night were the last of Ashley's career. So years from now, when she presses rewind, it's just gonna, it's gonna feel so surreal. You're gonna look back and say, that, that was me. This week, Janet was named Marion Catholic's female scholar athlete, and despite all her injuries, she hopes to become a physician's assistant or physical therapist. Coming up next, Joe Garbacic will have a final look at your upcoming forecast. forget it. One minute, we are talking about going to the movies, and the next, Maggie could barely speak. It was a stroke. I thought I was going to lose her. But I never saw doctors work so fast. Anyway, she's coming home tomorrow. I just hope she doesn't yell at me for killing all the plants. <laughs> chance of uh, some snow as we go into our Sunday and Monday. All right, well, I know that there might be some snow coming our way, so make sure that you are especially careful Sunday into Monday when, Joe, you talked about a possible storm. You never yeah, know what could change, happen. Yeah. We mm -hmm. saw Storm Juno, and everybody joke was, do you know where the storm was? I thought that was... Yeah, one quick thing about the, the storm names, with, with the, when it's called Juno, like with hurricanes, it's standard. The government, everybody yeah. accepts the actual storm names. And I probably shouldn't mention this because it's another network, but I, I, well, it, it's not a big deal. Uh, Juno is only named by the actual Weather Channel. Government or nobody else has storm names. They don't agree with it. So strictly Weather Channel only oh, related in terms of the names. So if you're wondering at home, that's that. But All right. that's that. Well, if you are, if you're going to stay home, uh, let's see if you match up with maybe some of our Super Bowl big game yeah. picks. There you go. Hey, I'm ready for the big game. I'm not even a fan of either one of the teams, but we'll see what happens. 29-22 Patriots. That's the prediction. All right. I'll go 30-28. 30, 
21 Seahawks. We're out of time. I'm just saying Patriots. <laughs> See you on Monday. Have fun.